jamming jamming with paint your body uh bmw 3 series paint code c1x sunrise orange or some such thing um this is in exalta uh formerly known as dupont so getting right into it um oh real quick subscribe i have other videos and i want to keep making videos and i will keep making videos uh you know and i try to put a lot of information in them to help other people out just put my perspective out there how i do things but subscribe um you know i'm going to keep making videos so you know and spread the word uh uh share with your friends or whoever or anybody that might you know uh be interested but uh you know i enjoy doing this i i paint every day anyways regardless of if i make a video or not so it just would motivate me to continue um you know maybe make more videos whatever so just subscribe I, i'd appreciate that but all right so jumping into this um it's a 29 i think it's a 2019 bmw i painted this car about a month ago uh you know and i made the video and i didn't do anything with it and it's been up on my computer getting it ready to edit and narrate it and all this other stuff so i'm finally getting down to doing it and um yeah so here we are so this is the sealer uh value shade i think it's like a five if you're familiar with exalta or dupont or the value shade system with at least this this paint line so i blend it into i took the sealer and i blend it into the driver's side fender just a little bit i always do this uh you know i've seen people that don't do that uh they'll just uh seal the areas that they need to blend the base coat into the blend panel and i've seen them have good luck with it i've done it like that and had good luck with it but over the past few years i decided to uh start to uh blend the sealer or ground coats uh especially i don't know i i, I honestly don't know when i started doing it but I, it's been you know a few years at least um and i like to do that it just helps to guarantee that it's going to be the same look on the blend panels as the uh, panels that are supposed to be getting refinished so the sealer just wrapped that up you can see now it's completely flashed off it's probably been about 10 15 minutes i like to take this time to go and mix up the base coat clean out my spray gun get everything set up for the next coat um so right now obviously i'm tacking this off it's an important part uh, i say in my other videos you want to make sure you're tacking these off uh, pretty thoroughly because you know in between coats or walking in and out of the spray booth anything you're bound to have a piece of dirt or a few or a lot uh, land on the panel and you want to make sure you get that off so give it a quick tack it's you know, it's important just do it it'll it'll make your jobs look better all right so this is the first coat of base that we're going to hammer down here um you know check the gun settings there we go a little spray pattern thing there okay all right yeah we're looking pretty good it's nice and even this is the techno pro light i've used uh this gun in pretty much all the videos actually every single video i've been using this gun now for two years i'd say i love it i really there's nothing about it that i would critique or change i use the 1.4 with the high efficiency um <clears throat> i think the air pressures are different and honestly once we get later in the video i i you know with the clear coat gun i'd like to just kind of address a little bit on the air pressure with that which is almost astounding because uh a lot of people like to use a higher air pressure um and i've used a high air pressure before as well but we'll, we'll get to that we'll cross that bridge when we get to it uh but right now this is the base coat solvent base coat with exalta chroma premier it's an activated base coat so it's been reduced um and activated everything's mixed on the scale uh on the computer program which um the shop that i worked at before the computer wasn't hooked up to the scale it was a 
a little bit more old school, the style of uh, mixing and this and that. But same good results and everything was fine. Um, you know, I am enjoying using the computer uh, with the scale hooked up to it. It's nothing new, but for me it is. So I'm enjoying it. And, um, you know, it's nice. But if you don't have that or you're in a shop or a scenario or a situation where you don't have that, doesn't matter. You could still get an awesome job without it. It's just a luxury. So, uh, like I said, if you have it, awesome, cool. If you don't, doesn't matter. You could still get a really good job out of uh, out of the spray booth, out of mixing the paint, doing everything, um, you know, in a different way. So, uh, all right. So the bumper already blended the color on the uh, driver's side fender. Um, the bumpers covered pretty pretty quickly. This color seems to be covering very quickly, especially over this value shade or this uh, sealer ground coat. Pretty uh, pleased with how this is spraying. And I, I feel like I'm moving pretty quick with this, too. Uh, it's going on really, really well. So just going to kind of keep on going with it. Blending into the rear door. And just keep in mind... You want to, you don't want to bl drag that blend out too far. Uh, you know, it's important not to go too, too far with that. You never want to end your blend in the same place. Uh, you can do that. I know people that have done that and probably still do that. Um, back in your days, I went to a trade school to learn about a lot of this. Um, you know, I went for auto body in a high school, a trade school. It was a high school. Um, and, you know, one of the first things that I learned as far as blending or painting was you, you never want to cut the blend off or end the blend in the same spot. So from top to bottom of the door or whatever panel you're blending, you want to stagger the area that you're going to blend. So let's say at the top of the door you blend it a little shorter, but towards the bottom you start going further and further or vice versa, longer at the top, shorter at the bottom, something like that. You, you don't ever want to end the blend at the same spot on whatever panel you're blending. It's going to still kind of create not a line, but more of a defined uh, signature or, or uh, you know, a, a defined area that is more noticeable than if you break it up. So, uh, that that's the best way in my opinion and I'm uh, the instructor that taught me that years ago I want to give this guy two thumbs up and uh, appreciate that advice and I never forgot it and I've always applied it uh, from the beginning and it's helped me out a lot and um, you know to kind of piggyback on that if you get good advice stick with the good advice it will help you more than you'll ever know. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't try to uh, become the next uh, Chip Foos or somebody else, whatever. Just, you know, do the best you can and focus on doing a good job. And it's going to take you far. It's really going to take you far. So uh, this is the second coat of base here. And it's going on really, really good. First coat covered really well. But regardless, you're still going to want to do two, three coats. Or a definitely two uh three coats usually three and a half um and in this video i'm going to show that as well uh i'm pretty sure i think i did three coats on this um all right so on this i taped this a little funky um and i say it like that because normally yeah see here normally um when this door, this is a brand new door, brand new fender, brand new door. It got edged, uh, and this top part of the uh, door didn't get edged with it. It happens. It doesn't matter or whatever it happens. So that's why I taped it the way I did. Um, so I tried to get some color on there and get it covered as best as I can. Just, I can't, I, I didn't want to just leave it black with the e-coat from the factory. So that's, that's why I did it the way I did. And, uh, you know, it, it came out fine. It's, it's all going to get covered anyways. But, like I said, I didn't want to just leave it black from the factory with the e-coat. So I wanted to put some color on there. 
Uh, I think ultimately I sprayed clear on there as well, just to just to keep it in line with what the factory look is. All right, and if you notice now, like I said, don't end the blend in the same spot on the door or the same area. I'm dragging out the bottom. The lower I go on that door, the more I'm dragging out that blend. And, um, you know, that's really important. It's really important to do that, especially if you have a tough color. This color really wasn't that bad, but, I mean, definitely needed to be blended. third coat of base here I believe this is the final coat of base it's gonna be a little quicker a, a little bit lighter I'm using this to even everything out uh, make sure everything is pretty much evened out and smoothed out and uniform and by uniform I mean um, the same way across the entire paint job it's easy if, you, if you're if you putting the base coat on wet, like I did in the first coat, definitely. The second coat, um, if I left it like that and cleared it, it might look good, but there's a good chance that there's areas that are going to look uh, noticeable or they're going to show or, wow, the guy, whoever painted this car sprayed it really wet over here. Or, well, why does the base coat or the, uh, the pearl or the metallic look different over here, but over here it looks, you know just uh you got to follow up once you get your coverage this is also this is definitely once i get my coverage and by coverage i mean this you can't see the sealer the base coat you can't see through and if you have a, a color checking light which at this stage of the game you can get uh you can get a decent one for a good price cheap and uh, you, you're, you're not limited to just getting a, a, a five or $600 color checking light. You can literally get a decent color checking light for 60 bucks online. Uh, maybe with your local job, or I'm sure they carry them. Uh, they all do. Uh, but you got options, and use those options. It's going to make you better. It's going to make your paint work better and more consistent. Uh, and you want that precision. And by precision, I mean the same result over and over. Consistency, that's important. So this is the third coat. It's a lot lighter. I already checked the coverage is there. Everything is covered. This is to help even everything out and uh, uh, make everything look even again. Um, you know, match the factory look on the car. So we're going to go nice and easy. Not dry, not wet, but um, this is going to balance everything out, make it all uniform. And I'm going to blend into that rear door uh, probably even a little bit further. So uh, let's see what we do here. Yeah, a little bit further, but a lot lighter, and that's going to help. And again, you could tell by looking at the masking tape how far I'm going. And you can see didn't come near that rear door at all or uh, I'm sorry the quarter panel at all that's important it's so easy to get carried away with your blends and go too far you know keep it short keep it short otherwise you're gonna find yourself all the way at the next panel dragging it out and the color match uh, it's not gonna be there there's a problem where the boss wants to know what happened and how you know how are you gonna explain that so just keep the blend short and uh, try to have the color as close as you can. That's important. So um, just going to finish up a little base here. I think that's a little breakthrough or a chip or something on the edge. I don't want to go too crazy with the color because this is the edge that goes uh, by the quarter panel, I believe. And I didn't really bring color down to that point at all. So if I go nuts hammering on base coat on that edge, uh, 
that's definitely going to be really noticeable. And what's the point of blending if I'm going to do that? So finished up the third coat of base. We're going to move on, I believe, to the clear coat and uh, heading towards wrapping up this paint job. Say hi to my buddies, my co-workers. Wanted to check out what I got going on and what I'm doing, so a little shout out to them. Love you guys. First coat of clear, not trying to make it look like glass or so smooth. I'm getting it on. Uh, I want it to look nice, but this isn't the final coat. The most important thing is to have a nice even coat of clear. And then I can build upon that uh, on the next coat. Um, this is the Technoclear Coat Gun 1.4 with the high efficiency air cap. And like I said earlier in the video, so something that I've noticed and honestly, not even sure, but uh, I'm spraying this clear coat at almost the same pressure as I do base coat. And I'm doing this by the sound and how it actually lays out on the panel. And what I found is the higher the pressure, this is even with a 1.4. Now, this clear isn't very thick. This is, uh, geez, what is this, 7900S, something like that. This is, I, I got to look into that, but uh, we're using all DuPont or Exalta straight across the line. No aftermarket clear or product or anything. Um, but the, the clear, it's not very thick, so it's not a super thick clear. So, you know, maybe that, that could have something to do with it. But what I've found is with this spray gun, uh, the high flow fittings, um, I mean, everything where it needs to be, I get the best results, at least with how I spray, with a lower pressure. And I think that I'm around like 23, 22 PSI spraying clear coat. And um, that's that's pretty low, especially considering people are spraying normally 25, 26 and higher. Uh, this is what works, and it's working. Um, you know, and I guess maybe once you get better or more used to things or whatever, but you could check it by how it sounds even. And just the sound of how I'm setting the gun... I'll pull the trigger and I hear the air atomizing that clear coat and the sound of it is different. So the higher you crank it, the air pressure, the higher you go, it'll sound different. And there's there's a spot or an area with the pressure and the clear that I'm using uh, where, you, where it sounds nice and smooth and then where it starts to sound uh, almost like it's straining. I don't know if that's really a good way to explain it, but you can tell like, wow, that pressure seems high. And you, I dial it back a little and it's a nice even, shh, nice and even. Um, and it, it sounds natural like that. Oh, wow, that sounds good. That's how it's supposed to sound like nice and nice and easy. And when I get to that spot or that point with the pressure and with this clear, it sprays beautiful i i don't understand whatever that's how it works usually like i said with clear you spray it a little bit higher of a pressure um but i'm spraying about base coat pressure a little bit higher and it sprays awesome so that's how i've been doing it
Ready to wrap this paint job up right now this is the clear coat blender I'm gonna blend this post I like to do this especially uh, on a new fender or replacing the fender something like that but it's important it, it just makes the job look better little detail to do uh, but wrapping this job up uh, three coats of base two coats of clear and it's looking good it's looking sharp so thanks for watching